Good morning, everyone. My name is Jenny, and I want to welcome you to 365 Reading. It is my pleasure this morning to introduce two wonderful authors that we have with us, or sorry, readers that we have with us today, one of them actually being an author, so that's kind of cool, a special treat for us. Um, I will go ahead and introduce the two of them, and then we'll get started reading. Uh, first up, I want to introduce Miss Danielle Martin. Danielle is a former teacher of the Harrisburg School District. Uh, from what I hear, a very wonderful teacher, which uh, sounds like the district was very, very lucky to have her. Currently, she's with Temple, still helping students to succeed in their education and life at college, which is pretty cool. Uh, she has 15-year-old twins, uh, which she sounds very, very proud of. They're in high school now. And... Um, she also loves children and loves to read. So extremely excited to have you here today, Danielle. Thank you so much for being here. For uh, our second reader is going to be Debbie. And Debbie uh, loves her family, speaks about all of her children and her grandchild that she actually reads to online, which is sort of cool. Hopefully uh, her 15-month-old grandchild will be listening today. Uh, Debbie's also a former school teacher in the, in the Harrisburg School District. She's a reading specialist, so really has a love for reading that she's passed on throughout her family. Um, she is an author, like I mentioned before, kind of cool story. She said that Lloyd was a mentor to her and really encouraged her to step out into becoming an author. And she's written a couple of books that hopefully you can share with us today, Debbie. So without further ado, welcome all this morning on this impending snowy day and we'll get started with uh, Danielle. So Danielle, share with us your book that you're going to read this morning and tell us a little bit about why you chose that book and what it might mean to you. Um, so this morning I want to read If You Give a Mouth a Cookie. This is one of my absolute favorite books and my daughters enjoyed this book um, when they were young. So I thought that I would share this book with you all this morning. So I guess I'll go ahead and get started. Let's read. So I'm going to read and then I'll show you the pictures so that I can make sure everything fits in the, in the screen for you. If You Give a Mouse a Cookie by Laura Numeroff. So this little, little guy here. Yeah. Wonder what's gonna happen. If You Give a Mouse a Cookie. If you give a mouse a cookie, he's going to ask for a glass of milk. And when you give him the milk, probably ask for a straw. And when he's finished, he'll ask for a napkin. Then he'll want to look in the mirror to make sure he doesn't have a milk mustache. Do you ever have a milk mustache when you drink milk? When he looks into the mirror, he might notice his hair needs a trim. So he'll probably ask for a pair of nail scissors. This little guy, something else. And there he is there, asking for his nail scissors. <laughs> when he's finished giving himself a trim, he'll want a broom to sweep it up. He'll start sweeping. Look at all of that, that hair there. All over the thing. He's making a little bit of a mess. He may get carried away and sweep every room in the house. He may even end up washing the floors as well. And when he's done, he'll probably want to take a nap. Because sweeping and cleaning is a hard job. You definitely want to take a nap when you're done cleaning. Look at him. Okay. 
you have to fix up a little box for him with a blanket and a pillow. He'll crawl in, make himself comfortable, and fluff a pillow a few times. He'll probably ask you to read him a story. So there he is, getting a little bed ready for the mouse. And here he is, getting all ready for his nap. <laughs> so you'll read to him from one of your books and he'll ask to see the pictures. Just like you and I were looking at the pictures. When he looks at the pictures, he'll get so excited. He'll want to draw one of his own. He'll ask for paper and crayons. Here he is there. He's supposed to be taking a nap, but now he wants paper and crayons. He's a busy little fellow, isn't he? He'll draw a picture. There he is with his crayons. Do you have crayons that you like to draw with? I love to read, but I love to draw too. When the picture is finished, he'll want to sign his name. That's a pretty nice picture. Here he is. He'll want to sign his name with a pen. Then he'll want to hang his picture up on the refrigerator, which means he'll need, so there he is. <laughs> He's so funny. Which means he'll need scotch tape. Tape helps you hang things up so they don't fall down. He'll hang his drawing. He'll hang up his drawing and stand back to look at it. Because he's so proud, right? Looking at the refrigerator will remind him of that. So there it is. So looking at the refrigerator will remind him that he's thirsty. Look at him. Ah, I'm so thirsty. So what do you think is going to happen next? I don't know. Let's see. So he'll ask for a glass of milk. Remember, I think he asked for a glass for a milk before. And chances are, if he asked for a glass of milk, what do you think is going to happen? If he asked for a glass of milk, he'll want a cookie to go with it. One of my favorites. So thank you very much for sharing my favorite story with me. I love this story. Thank you, Danielle, for sharing that. You're welcome. That was such a that was such a fun book and a fun experience. But I just want to comment. I love how you made it so curious too. <laughs> how you made comments about the story and you you asked curiosity questions and you even shared a little bit about yourself and things that you enjoyed during the story. So yeah. that was really fun. Thank you for sharing that with us. No problem. Thank you for having me. Hopefully yeah, of course. So stick around. We're going to talk to you in a little bit. For now, we're going to switch over to Miss Debbie and uh, Debbie. Go ahead and share with us the books that you chose and what they mean to you. Well, um, I'm going to read a Hanukkah story today because I celebrate Hanukkah and I went through all my, my books to find the Hanukkah stories. So I have a whole bunch here and here in the midst of one of my Hanukkah stories, I found Jingle Bells, which is also a fun story to read this time of the year. And it's a song, which I love songs. But anyhow, this story today that I'm going to read, it's called My First Menorah. And this is a board book. 
And I think it's a lot of fun to have board books for, for younger children. And especially my grandson, his age is 15 months and he loves to read board books. So this is a story about the menorah. And I have a menorah right behind me right here. And it happens to be, this is going to be the, this is the um, seventh day of Hanukkah. And um, we had put there the seven candles and tonight will be the, um, I'm sorry, this, that's right, one, that's counted together. One, two, three, four, five, six. The sixth night of Hanukkah was last night. And then tonight will be the seventh night of Hanukkah. So that's what's so exciting about it. this book with the menorah. You can even count the menorah in this book as well. And you start from the left to light the menorah. And that would be one, two, three, four, fourth night, fifth, sixth night was last night. And now tonight will be the seventh. And right here is the shamash. And we're going to be reading about the shamash. So here we go. My first menorah, Hanukkah. Hanukkah is a joyous celebration for Jews all over the world. The menorah holds eight candles plus one very special candle in the center called the shamash, which is this candle right here. For eight days, we use the shamash to light the new candle every night to remember Hanukkah, the festival of lights. This is a fun book because you could touch these candles, but you can't touch the candles on the menorah because they could burn you. The first night of Hanukkah, we say a special blessing before we use the shamash to light the first candle on our menorah. The lighting of the candles during the Hanukkah celebrates a miracle that happened a long time ago. And this, would, this is the shamash candle right here. That's the tallest candle on the menorah. And we use that to light each candle each night. And this miracle happened over 2,000 years ago. The second night of Hanukkah, tonight we use the shamas to light two candles on our menorah. During the holiday, we celebrate the great victory of a small band of Jewish patriots called Maccabees, and they won over an evil king more than 2,000 years ago. So there we have our two candles for the second night. On the third night of Hanukkah, Tonight, we use the shamash to light three candles on our menorah. One, two, three. And we use the, and we celebrate the marvelous sacred lamp that stayed lit for eight straight days in the temple, even though there was enough oil for only one night. What an amazing miracle. And that's why we celebrate Hanukkah with our candles. It represents the oil. The fourth night of Hanukkah. One, two, three, four. Tonight, we'll use the shamas to light four candles on our menorah. Hanukkah is a celebration to share with family and friends. We feast on lots of special foods like delicious potato latkes and sweet jelly donuts. Yummy, yummy, yummy. On the fifth night, one, two, three, four, five. Tonight, we'll use the shamas to light the candles on our menorah. Hanukkah is a time to celebrate our blessings and share with them with others. Each family has its own traditions to celebrate the spirit of giving, like exchanging gifts or giving guilt, which is another name for money, to the needy. It's fun to receive gifts, but it's also fun to give them as well. And on the sixth night of Hanukkah, tonight we'll use the shamash. One, two, three, four, five, six, and there's the shamash. We'll use the shamash uh, to light the candles on the menorah. Hanukkah is a time to celebrate and have fun. We play and use these dreidels to play over 2,000 years ago. And the reason they use these dreidels to play with during Hanukkah is because the children were not allowed to learn. They weren't allowed to read. Can you believe it? They weren't allowed to read. So if the soldiers came to their house, they would quickly hide the dreidels and take out their um, doing different, other different things in the house, but not learning. And then they put the dreidels back on the table and they would be pretending they're just playing games with the dreidels. Instead of um, reading and learning, they'd be playing dre dreidel games. So they felt it was not, they Jews were not allowed to learn. And that's why the children would use a dreidel to pretend that they were just playing games and not learning. But we know reading is very important because we can learn so much about the world around us. So that's the sixth night of Hanukkah. And then on the seventh night of Hanukkah, tonight we use the shamash to light the candles again on the menorah, singing festive songs in a fun way to celebrate Hanukkah. 
We'll sing dreidel songs. I'm sure a lot of you heard the dreidel song. I have a little dreidel. I made it out of clay. And when it's dry and ready, oh dreidel, I shall play. That's a famous song. On the eighth night, the manure is all lit up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and the shamish candle. It's all lit up on our manure. And Hanukkah is a time for celebrating blessings with prayer and songs, games and gifts, and delicious food. But most of all, it's time for family and friends. Happy Hanukkah to everyone who celebrates it and have a Merry Christmas to everybody who celebrates Christmas. Happy holidays to everybody. Thank you. That was so wonderful. That was so much fun. Thank you so much, Debbie. You're welcome. Now, do you have a second book you'd like to share with us today? Um, or, you, you don't have to. I just wasn't sure if you yeah, planned on it. I just wanted you to see that I have uh, many different other Hanukkah stories. Yeah. Many, many, many Hanukkah stories out there. There's crafts for Hanukkah. Um, this is called Yitzi the Giant Menorah. <gasps> this is a beautiful, um, beautiful Yetis Hanukkah kitten. There's so oh. many stories out there about Hanukkah. And I just wanted to show you that there's others as well. I chose awesome. this one today because I thought this was fun with counting the candles. Yeah. And, um, there's actually um, 44 candles that we light all together for the whole holiday of um, Hanukkah. So Wonderful. we have lots of candles in the house. <laughs> yeah, that's really special. That's really nice. What I felt, the, the part about the dreidel, always just so much had such an influence on me, especially yeah. when I share this story about the dreidel in school. And I would mm -hmm. share with children that, um, that the Jewish children were allowed to learn. They weren't allowed to read. So yeah. they were reading their books in the house. And then if the soldiers came knocking at the door, they would hide their books and take out the dreidels to play with. Wow. So they just played and they didn't learn. Yeah. And, um, I had a student one time who raised her hand after I told the story of Hanukkah and um, she said to come here and she whispered in my ear, she said, I, she goes, I'm Muslim and I'm not allowed to tell anybody. And I yeah. thought, oh my gosh, this was about four years ago. When yeah. I was Lewisburg. It was very sad, but here yeah. she made a connection with the Jews from 2000 years ago. Right. So right. Will happen, unfortunately. That's incredibly powerful. Yeah. yeah. Wow. And, and a heavy weight for a kid to have to bear. You know, and certainly I think that we're evaluating that a lot within our communities is not just the weight that us as adults sometimes have to carry, but mm -hmm. sometimes, you know, what our children are carrying. Right. And it's important to identify that so that we can help support them. Exactly. That's wonderful. Yeah. yeah. Danielle, do you mind hopping back on? I'd love to kind of ask you both a few questions about your your choices for today. Uh, thank you both again for those books. They were really special. They were really fun. And it sounds like both of you chose books that had a lot of meaning to you which is just so cool to me. You know, sometimes we use books as tools, but in fact, they can become quite a bit of part of our family and our memories. And, can't, you know, that sentimental piece to it can really carry on for years. So I just, um, I also love that both of you are, are educators because I think also that you have a unique insight into the power of reading and the power of the influence of books. Mm -hmm. So uh, Debbie, I actually want to ask you, you talked a bit about how reading can help to uh, empower you know, awareness and knowledge and education. Uh, as a former reading specialist and as an educator, why do you think it's so important to make sure that we're drawing in all kinds of books so that it can influence the way that children not just learn reading skills, but the way that they learn about life in general? It builds language, it builds vocabulary. That yeah. is so important because yeah. where do you get it is through a book. And, yeah. um, and it inspires children to ask questions. And I would mm -hmm. always tell my students, it's more important sometimes to ask the question than know the answer. So, wow, I like that. Yeah, thank you. When you're reading together, that does it. And, and it's, so, it's proven now through brain research that it's important to read to your child as soon as they're born. Some people say even in their tummies, but mm -hmm. it's so important. It's, it's yeah. just makes, it makes sense because their brain is capturing everything all mm -hmm. the language development they need. I'd like to piggyback off of that. Yeah. And say also, um, it, it helps promote and create awareness. And also when you get to the, um, you know, middle school, high school, and where I'm at, even in college, um, you know, it helps you to seek things that are different. Um, mm -hmm. it, it opens up so much for you. It's like a different world. Yeah. You know, and so when you become older, um, 
there are all these things that are out there and you actually can take a real life adventure through reading a book. Right. You know, right. So it, sparks, it sparks all these different interests um, and then helps you when you, you know, maybe go to college or finish high school to figure mm -hmm. out what type of career that you may want to have. That's really interesting that you pulled that in. So not only are we creating awareness of ourselves and the world around us and even maybe people who have different experiences than us, but also it's an investment into our future work in our life. That's uh, yeah, that's pretty cool to think about how powerful it is. So, so reading as early as possible, reading different kinds of books, really allowing kids and teenagers and adults to be exposed to different experiences through books is so important in so many ways. And um, it's, yeah, and, and I like too that you both are coming again from a pro professional perspective is that this is not just, you know, a thought like, oh, we love reading in our house. No, this is really sound based on research. You've seen it in your experience as teachers and that's really special too. So thank you for sharing your lives with children in that way and also for sharing that information now. Cause I think a lot of parents and grandparents and family and community members who are raising children doubt themselves a lot. And so something as simple as saying, just sit down and share a book with the child in your life can be incredibly special. That's really powerful. Thank you for that. And especially so, right now. Yeah, especially go ahead. Right now, I think it's so important, you know, because we're all in the house and we're, a lot of children aren't in school and, you know, parents think they should be doing workbooks or this and that. Just go to the library, borrow books. Mm -hmm. And that's learning. That's that's you know we are we are lifelong learners. And I, I like to say to my children, you know, reading is fundamental, and reading will save your life. You know, if you think about it, we read directions, we read traffic signs. Um, there's not too much around us that you know what we call it. We used to call it Mrs. Reed in the in the classroom environmental print. You know, we read all those things around us, and that 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 helps us to survive. Yeah, wonderful. So what a gift to be able to give to the children in our lives to be able to share that in such gift. profound ways. Give yeah. the gift of reading for the holidays. That's great. Yeah. yeah. Um, Danielle, I wanna ask you, when you were reading your book, you asked questions about the story. You made comments, curiosity comments about, I wonder what's happening there. Again, you shared about yourself, about how you like to draw. You like to read, but you also like to draw too. Why do you think it's important to engage with the book like that when you're reading to a child? Um, because I, help, I think that it helps develop skills. So um, in, in this book, uh, there's a predictable situation going on here. So, you know, if you give a mouse a cookie, then he's going to want to do all these other things. It also um, helps with conversation. So it's important to, um, you know, at that time when you are asking questions, it's getting your child or um, another child to think about some things. So you're developing some critical thinking skills there. Um, Open-ended questions help. You know, because then you're asking them to explain um, things rather than just a yes or no. So it helps with um, involvement and thinking skills. And it's yeah. fun. And it's fun. <laughs> All of that work being done in such a fun way. Right. It's win-win, right? Yep, definitely. So just as much as you shared about yourself, I thought, wow, books are a really great way of getting to know one another. And certainly, Debbie, you highlighted that as well. Let's get to know one another. Let's get to know people we don't even know and, you know, things about the world around us and, and through a book and how much fun is that? So, yeah, that's pretty cool. Um, Debbie, question for you. You shared about your family's experience with Hanukkah and all of the special traditions with things that are going on. Uh, and, and I'll ask you even, Danielle, with what is going on with the pandemic and you know how unusual things are certainly for for all of us out here uh, what plans or traditions are you uh, looking forward to honoring or observing somehow despite this pandemic i'd love to share what you have planned with your family and your friends for this holiday season well it's we're in the midst of hanukkah right now and um, we all got together on a zoom and had a hanukkah celebration with all the children and lighting the candles and and um, yeah, we've been having that every night. We're with different families and, and um, singing songs together, Hanukkah mm -hmm. songs, and yeah. So it's 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 Good. sad we can't be together, but um, but thank goodness for Zoom. That's all. Thank I goodness. Yeah. <laughs> it's our connection. Yeah. Zoom and love, right? 
you can't right. break those down. Right. Yeah. Right. Okay. How about you, Danielle? Uh, well, I just put the Christmas tree up last night. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm a little late, but um, you know, that is something that we enjoy doing, turning on music, decorating the Christmas tree as a family, um, cookies. Um, and then later on after Christmas in the African-American culture, there is Kwanzaa. And so mm -hmm. some of us celebrate Kwanzaa. And so this, I love this time of year because it's a learning experience. And even as um, Debbie, as you were reading your book, there were some things that I didn't know about Hanukkah and that I thought was really cool that you shared. So it's just a time for all of us to learn something different about each other and each other's cultures. Yeah, agreed. Yeah, thank you both for sharing so much of yourselves and those wonderful books today. It was very, very awesome to have you both here. Uh, thank you for dedicating your time and you know sharing about your family. So certainly right now, more than ever, just being together and supporting one another and connecting however we can is important. Even if it looks different, mm -hmm. uh, being together is so important. And what better way to do that than sitting down with a book and taking our time on that. Yeah. So uh, before we close for this reading day, I just want to uh, read a quote. Uh, snowflakes, of course, we've got our snow coming up. Some of you have snow falling outside the window already. <laughs> uh, this quote says this, snowflakes are one of nature's, nature's most fragile things but just look at what they can do when they stick together. And I think that that's sort of a powerful sentiment for us to keep in mind with our families, especially during this holiday season that it can be really rough for a lot of us. So slow down, appreciate what you're doing in your life because it is good enough. And of course, sit down with your favorite people, even if it's sitting down by yourself with a hot cup of tea and read a book, any book. Thank you all so much for being here for 365 Reading. Stay safe, enjoy the snow, and we'll see you next week. You too. Thanks for having me. Of course.